Our <laughs> guest in our first segment of the program is Mitch Carmichael. He is the Secretary of the Department of Economic Development. Of course, we know him also as the former Senate President. Good morning, Mitch. How are you, sir? I'm great, Rob. How are you? Good. Thanks. Sounds like you guys are having fun. We always do. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to work, you might as well have fun. Amen. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I talked to a good friend of mine yesterday who who uh, work, works on Wall Street, uh, sent me a picture yesterday of his shot from his office building. And he said, here's where I was working yesterday. And he showed me, it looked like some luxurious pool lounge somewhere in Florida. And the month before, he was in Calabria, Italy, where he yeah. rented a whatever. And I said, oh, well, here's, here's where I did, what I did today. And I showed him a picture of me in the studio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where I'm like, you know, I, I just get paid to talk. Uh, well, you do a great job at it, guys. Well, we appreciate that, Mitch. Hey, uh, let's talk about economic development in West Virginia. And we could probably begin with the, the biggest news of uh, the last week or so, and that's Form Energy in the northern panhandle. Uh, we had Delegate Pat McGeehan on yesterday. Mitch, he's strongly opposed to that project there. And I know it's fairly close in the House as to how that vote's ultimately going to go. Uh, what are your thoughts on Form Energy, and uh, why are you behind this project? Well, I, it, this is an incredible project for West Virginia, and uh, I'll, I'll lay out the advantages. Uh, first, it's 750 jobs, great advanced manufacturing jobs that provide health care and retirement package. So, you know, if you say nothing else, uh, you say, wow, that's an incredible victory for West Virginia, a new age company that is producing a grid uh, utility scale batteries for uh, for the uh, for America. I mean, these products are to replace like the China's uh, lithium uh, cobalt type manufacturer of batteries. This is an American sourced, American uh, utilized product that will strengthen and harden the electrical grid in America. And it's being conducted in Weirton, West Virginia, which is a historic home of metal manufacturing uh, with Weirton steel. In fact, it's right on that property. So now then you get into the uh, point in every economic development uh, discussion, what is the risk to West Virginia to helping uh, secure that transaction, Rob? In other words, these these transactions, they looked at uh, 16 different states, over 100 different locations, and they chose West Virginia. Uh, and that's a you know a testament to everything that's been done in the legislature and through the governor's office over the last several years to make us an appealing place for business. So, but it's a relatively new company. They're about six years old. They have 400 employees already. They've raised 800 million dollars in the capital markets. And so we have a high degree of confidence that they're going to be successful. But just in case they're not, and this is the biggest point of this entire transaction, West Virginia owns the building and the property. That is our collateral, our security, and you don't get any better than that. Uh, so uh, we're very comfortable. Uh, in fact, we're very excited for the people of the northern panhandle of West Virginia to be able to – to. Uh, revitalize that historic steel um, manufacturing town with 750 advanced manufacturing jobs. And West Virginia's university's Department of Economics, uh, John Deskins, has put out a piece uh, that says there will be over 3,000 spinoff jobs as a result of this uh, transaction. So we're, we think we've protected West Virginia better than any transaction we've done. This is... Uh, 100% collateral and security. We own it. They only get it if they perform. Uh, and if they don't perform, it remains ours, and we'll put somebody else in there. <laughs> Mitch, is the purchase of the building and the property the extent of West Virginia's financial investment in this? Largely. It's a $290 million uh, uh, infrastructure or purchase and uh, subsidy to the product uh, that ultimately they have to perform to get it. But uh, there is about $10 million associated with utility movement and uh, uh, site preparation. But other than that, it's 100%. And you can even c characterize that as infrastructure as well. It's 100% uh, building and land, Are they getting which a is going to ultimately be a 900,000-square-foot building. Uh, housing, as I say, 750 employees, or it's 
or they don't get a penny. Are they getting a pilot program of sorts as well? That's on the local county uh, to make those decisions, and we're not involved in those negotiations at all. I think they are in the process of working uh, with the county to, uh, to, to utilize a pilot program. But what I'll say, it's almost irrelevant because uh, West Virginia owns the building and the property. Bill? Yeah, good morning, Mitch. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, the House Finance Committee yesterday had uh, passed a $105 million supplemental appropriation for this. Uh, how does that differ from the $90 million you just referred to? Yeah, the, the, uh, the funding package for this uh, transaction comes in three different phases. Uh, and it, that's another great advantage of the transaction for West Virginia. We put guardrails around uh, the performance the characteristics of this, of the way we structured the deal so that they have to demonstrate to us uh, that they have orders for their product in the marketplace, that they have expended their own private capital for the equipment and so forth to, to put in the uh, facility, and uh, they have to have hired a certain number of people at each different phases, totaling up to 750. So the the way we did the transaction is uh, we allocated it in different phases, and they have to hit those markers before the phases become uh, dis- before we can dispense it for the project. Uh, well, let me rephrase my question: the uh, what the House Finance Committee. Uh, advanced yesterday, one hundred five million dollars supplemental. Is that in the? Is that independent and over and above the ninety million dollars that you referred to earlier? No, it's a component of. Uh, it's a component. And I, okay. What I referred to was two hundred ninety million dollars. Okay, I, th- I uh, thought. 90 yeah, million. so okay. it's a component of the entire funding stream. Okay, uh, Rob mentioned uh, Delegate McGinn was on yesterday, and he all, and Rob also mentioned that he was critical. Uh, the points that I heard uh, Delegate McGinn criticized were four, and let me uh, give all four of them right now and have you respond mm-hmm. to them. One, he argued that it's a startup company that has very little history and therefore greater risk. Second, he, he says it's kind of a recycled energy concept that's been around for several years. Thirdly, he said there was a, f- a question of foreign investment. He did not name the countries, but I think China was, is one. And then Fourthly, since this is is in his district backyard, he said he felt there could be better use of the property than what has been proposed. Would you address those four for me, please? Yeah, absolutely. And first, let me just say I have enormous respect for Delegate McGee, and he, uh, uh, you know, his uh, thoughtful analysis of this is welcome. And so, let me just address those first as to the startup. And uh, the relative risk, they are a six, roughly six-year-old company. As I mentioned earlier, they already have 400 employees. Uh, they're either in uh, Boston or uh, the Silicon Valley, largely. Uh, and so uh, he's right to the extent that they are not a you know 100-year-old company with uh, – uh, Fortune 500 credentials. But these are the kind of companies we want to attract to West Virginia, the ne- next phase of energy development and so forth. But to his point as to saying, is there more risk with it? And our response is, we've addressed that. Yes, we've mitigated the risk by owning the property and the building, uh, which uh, any banker would tell you that is the greatest source of collateral we can have. Uh, and so that we check that box by saying, is there more risk with this transaction? The answer is yes, and the the uh, response is we've mitigated it by owning the property in the building. It's a very unique uh, way of uh, doing this transaction. Furthermore, uh, they will pay us market-based lease rates for the building and the land uh, as they are transitioning up to 750 employees. So that's Part one, we've mitigated the risk and we've addressed it just like any uh, good lender would. Uh, as to recycled energy um, uh, concept. technology, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. excuse me? No, uh, you're right. I, it's concept technology. Thank you. Yes. 
Oh yeah, no, it's it this is uh this is proven technology that is being commercialized for energy storage on the grid. This is not transportation type uh battery storage where we uh you know mine the uh, material and uh China and then bring it over here and manufacture batteries for transportation network cars those kind of things or lit, uh cell phones. That's not what's occurring here. This is uh, strengthening and hardening. These are utility scale. They're enormously heavy, uh, so they're not utilized. And they're used iron. They use iron uh, to uh, uh, to create these uh, structures that house uh, batteries that will uh, discharge over a 100-hour period. So that when we have, we saw it just in Texas uh, within the past couple of weeks where their grid um, was breaking down because of they needed more uh, reliability and stability. And that's what these batteries provide. So, and furthermore, we're not in a position to evaluate technology. Nobody in the legislature is, nobody in the Department of Economic Development. We have to rely on the marketplace uh, to for the experts in this. And they have gone to the markets to and raised $800 million. <laughs> There's people that are willing to put $800 million in this to say, we believe in this technology. And uh, so, and furthermore, if it, if it doesn't work out, it's ours. Uh, but we we have every degree of confidence, and the mark. In fact, they've already gotten orders for these products uh, from Minnesota's second largest utility, from uh, Colorado's second largest util- utility, and Georgia's uh, powers utility. So this is uh, absolutely validated technology, and it's going to work. So. As to foreign investment, that's just uh, you know sort of a uh, I don't know gaslighting or a dog whistle. It, it, there, uh, there's no China investment in this, and uh, I respect the opportunity to to respond to this because uh, you know sometimes that's just thrown out to say hey there's foreign investment in, you know China and this that that's not the case. In fact, they've undergone an analysis from a legal firm that requ- does not require them to go through the CFIUS process, which is the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. Uh, they've undergone that analysis. There is a Singapore uh, uh, investment firm that has uh, less than 10 percent of the company, but uh, they have, you know, Singapore is an ally of America. Uh, and uh, so they've undergone that analysis. There's an Australian firm also that invests all over the world that has a small piece. And then finally, as to whether there's a better use for the property or not, uh, you know, it's uh, 55, with the purchase is 55 acres of a 1,200 acre facility. And uh, this is, uh, the, the people that own the property now are thrilled with this transaction and uh, consider it an anchor uh, for incredible future development on that property. And uh, many of the others that represent that area uh, are very excited about the project and think that it's uh, the perfect utilization for the uh, for the land. So that's uh, you know a, a, more or less a matter of opinion, uh, but uh, you know I think uh, all the the local representatives there, uh, save uh, Mr. McGeehan, have uh, you know indicated their incredible support for the project. Matt. Mitch, how unusual is this type of a layout as far as economic development with the amount of money that this state will be putting in as opposed to other investors? And as you've already mentioned a couple of times, that the state will, at least for the current time, uh, own the property and perhaps even the building should things not succeed. Yeah. Uh, is it unusual? It's, it's, in terms of the money, uh, it's not unusual. In fact, over the last year, uh, the state of West Virginia has uh, participated in uh, attracting uh, companies like Nucor, uh, Commercial Metals Company, which is coming to the eastern panhandle, uh, Owens & Minor, which is a big uh, Fortune 300 company going to Morgantown. These are all big companies that were allocated uh, substantial sums of money. And since it's public information, I don't mind saying, uh, in, for instance, in Nucor's case, uh, 
the state of West Virginia committed $315 million to that project to attract a world-class uh, steel manufacturer that's going to be incredibly beneficial for our state. But we didn't get any collateral or security. Uh, we have the, their commitment to create these jobs. We fully believe it will be uh, realized, but we don't have any collateral security. In this case, we're allocating less money for more jobs, and we're 100 percent secure. Uh, so I, I just uh, the people that have viewed this uh, from the outside said this is a uh, this is the way all transactions moving forward really should be structured. Uh, and we're uh, you know you ever do one of these. <laughs> You ever have something where you where you put something together and you think everybody's going to say, "Great job"? <laughs> I mean, this is fantastic, and most people are saying that. Uh, but uh, it's uh, and we 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 welcome the scrutiny. Uh, but it's uh, this is a big win for the state of West Virginia, and our taxpayers are protected. This is, you know, guys, we have to make this transition in. Uh, to advance manufacturing and to new jobs in the new economy. And uh, this underscores the, uh, that transition for West Virginia. Not that we're um, uh, turning our back on our historic fossil fuel industry, because we welcome that, and they are expanding, and we're helping them to expand. But we want to be an all-of-the-above uh, state in which uh, you know people can feel comfortable coming here and establishing a world-class technology company with advanced manufacturing and know that they're as welcome here as anybody. You mentioned as well uh, that, that this company is six years old, already employing 400 people, and many of those right now in, in Boston and, and Silicon Valley. Is this plant going to be their first actual kind of on-the-ground building and, and plant to work out of? Is right now all that they're doing and the employees that they have kind of in the developmental phase? Uh, no, there is a facility in 84, Pennsylvania, not far from uh, where um, – well, yeah, most people are familiar with that outside of Pittsburgh and so forth. Uh, that is a small manufacturing facility for them currently. Uh, and we were in heavy competition with um, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, others uh, to locate this facility. And uh, so, no, this is not their first. This will be far and away their largest and their showpiece, uh, you know, sort of a flagship plant uh in fact, the gentleman who will be uh, overseeing the construction of this has been hired by Form Energy to build this building, built the building, uh, the Tesla Gigafactory in Texas. Uh, the renderings of this uh, plant are, uh, you know, just amazing. And uh, as I say, it's going to scale up to be a 900,000 square foot building, uh, almost a million square foot. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mitch. I'm sorry. Oh no, I just okay, yeah. you know I get excited about the project. Yeah, no, no, and I it's kind of, uh, and remotely it's kind of hard to tell if somebody's finished their thought or not. There, uh, yeah. Uh, you've uh, we've talked about new technology, and you mentioned it's going to be a competition for the lithium batteries. Uh, what exactly is the technology? Could you explain it to us in yep. layman's term and how yep. how it impacts the grid? Yes, uh, it is uh, a technology that takes iron, the most prevalent source uh, or, or the most prevalent um, uh, component in the entire universe or in uh, the world, iron. And uh, rather than taking a rare earth element like lithium and, uh, to build these batteries, they take iron, which in Weirton, they have a great history of working with iron and steel. They pelletize these uh, iron ingots uh, so that they're, they're very small pellets that are then uh, uh, put in a uh, container, so to speak, that with uh, particular solutions and the technology allows, it's, it's interesting, a rusting, like any iron, will rust. And then so it's charging these iron pellets while it's rusting. Then when the, the battery is called upon to be utilized to discharge, to feed the grid, it de-rust uh, those products with, uh, with oxygen uh, so that then uh, uh, the battery is incredibly uh, efficient, and it does so uh, over a 100-hour period. It can hold these charges for uh, 
many more hours, days, in fact, than a lithium battery, so that if there is a disruption in the grid, you know, we saw where, just yesterday I saw where there's some plan up in the New England state, some uh, terrorist had an idea, you know, a domestic uh uh, I don't want to call them terrorists, but, you know, just crazy person was going to, uh, had a plan to disrupt the grid, the yep. electrical grid. That was in Baltimore Jesus. overnight, Mitch. Okay, yeah, I knew I saw it somewhere just briefly, and yeah. so it was Baltimore overnight, close to you guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, these are the type of things that solidify the delivery of vital uh, electricity across the grid, and that, hence the reason all these uh, uh the utilities are ordering this product. Uh, they just need a place to build it, and these uh, this company is going to create 750 jobs somewhere. Uh, we want it to be in West Virginia, and we structured a transaction that protects our state by owning the building and the land in one of the most developable areas in the entire East Coast. Mitch, what's the time frame? You mentioned the three different yeah. phases. They need orders, they need capital, they need hiring. What's the time frame for kind of those three phases as it plays out? Okay, so it's a great question. The the phase one will be, phase one, phase two are undergoing right now, really. We're, we're hoping to run those contiguously where we uh, purchase the property and begin moving the utilities to accommodate this 55-acre uh, site for this million square foot building approximately that can be as soon as the this money is allocated through the legislature uh, that will occur this building is planned to be constructed uh, and and finished by the end of 2023 this year with uh, the product being delivered out of that facility probably q2 of 24. And that's a tight, fast time frame for a building of this size and magnitude and hiring that number of staff and so forth. So we're, uh, they've already, uh, they're in the process of ordering the equipment that will go into the facility. Um, and they're, they're very excited about being here. I mean, they realize that, you know, the legislative process will be what it is. And there are those who have every right to, um, uh, to put additional scrutiny on these transactions and so forth. And we, but we are very proud of this uh, for the citizens of West Virginia and the Northern Panhandle. I mean, we want them in the Northern Panhandle. You think about this, Rob, Bill, and everybody. That site had 14,000 employees on it at one time, and now it has virtually none. Uh, and we need uh, to make investments in these communities that have lost their um, – uh, economic engines, and uh, we can do that with this, and it this makes a difference in the lives of the people that are going to be working in this plant and their families. Uh, just think about, you know, we talk about health care, and we take it, all of us take it for granted, but the state of West Virginia and many people are on public financed health care systems, and it's uh, it's very difficult to maintain that. This is private pay health insurance. Uh, for not only the, the 750 workers there, but their families. This will help the school systems. It helps our social welfare programs. Uh, this is the kind of uh, transaction we need to do every day if we could do one. That's a good transition you just gave to me there, Mitch, too, because we have uh, Dr. Jessica Ice from West Virginians for Affordable Health Care on uh, right after we get done with this segment with you. So good transition. That's I appreciate it. That's fantastic. That. Yeah. Should send you a five dollar bill in the mail for that one. <laughs> hey, I want one of those free radon tests. <laughs> hey, mention Matt Miller's name today, you get one. Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> Mitch, thanks so much for your time this morning. As always, very much appreciated. Thanks. My pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh -huh.